Welcome to the third example in chapter eight, where we are thinking about momentum and collisions. So in this example, we have two people that are standing stationary on an icy surface. So we have a larger mass person and a smaller mass person. So M1, we will say, is 80 kilograms because we read about that person first. And M2 is 50 kilograms. Now, if they are both at rest, then we have information about their initial velocity. In this case, they are both zero. So this information, picture, and four listed given information values comes from the very first sentence. Now, the 80 kilogram person pushes the 50 kilogram person so that the 50 kilogram person slides because the 80 is the one we don't know about. So V final looks like six meters per second. And based on where I drew these people, um, this is gonna be pointing to the right. So V2 final is positive six meters per second. And we're asking to find the recoil velocity of the 80 kilogram person. Now this word recoil simply means that they weren't moving before and if one object moves to the right, the other object is going to have to move to the left in order to balance the momentum. So we kind of know about that backwards motion um, and that's all the recoil is trying to indicate to us. So our unknown is V1 final. This doesn't necessarily look like a collision but the reason why these objects move is because they are in contact with each other for a certain amount of time, which we're not told about, but we do know about their initial momentum before and after. So we are gonna be using the momentum conservation equation because there's going to be energy added to this system by the 80 kilogram person's muscles and it's worth noting that because they are both in contact, they are both applying a force on each other. That's Newton's third law. So the momentum conservation equation is M1V1 initial plus M2V2 initial equals M1V1 final plus M2V2 final. Because we've made this nice list of all of the labeled given information, we can just use that 80 times zero plus 50 times zero equals 80 times our unknown V1 final plus 50 times positive six. On the left, we have zero. On the right, we have 80 V1 final plus 300. So if we subtract 300 from both sides and then divide both sides by 80, then we get the final velocity of the 80 kilogram person is negative 3.75 meters per second. And that negative sign means that they're gonna be moving at 3.75 meters per second of speed in the opposite direction from the 50 kilogram person. So no matter how you drew the picture, Really what that negative sign is telling us is that the 80 kilogram person moves apart from the 50 kilogram person. So as I mentioned briefly, right, as around this um, setup step, there's energy being added to this system. One of the biggest reasons we have this as an example problem at all is to continue to highlight the fact that we cannot use energy conservation ideas from chapter seven in momentum uh, or collision problems like this one because there's energy being added to the system that's not trackable. These people had to use their muscles. They had to apply a force over a given distance, over a given time, and we don't have that information available to use a work term to follow the energy around in this situation. We have to use momentum conservation. And so uh, the other thing I pointed out, and it's something we talked about way at the beginning of chapter eight, the idea of Newton's third law, that every force has an equal and opposite force. 
That is important here because even though the wording says that the 80 kilogram person pushes on the 50 kilogram person, that 50 kilogram person pushes back, whether it's with their shoulder or with their hands, no matter what, there is a force in both directions. So momentum conservation is what we need to solve this problem. If we glance back at what we have here on the video at the end, the math is not very complicated uh, in this example or really in most of the chapter eight examples. As long as we do the setup that we label everything and we keep track of those plus and minus signs, there uh, in this problem type, which is just a momentum conservation problem type, there's not a whole lot um, to trick us. The tough problem type to come out of chapter eight is coming up. It's called a two-step problem, and we're going to see several examples and talk through the sticking points so that we know what makes these tough and we know how to handle them. I will see you in those next videos.